Hi, I'm Alistair, I'm a games designer, and in this video I'm going to explain how I created a chessboard puzzle uh, for an escape room game as part of International Games Week. Uh, players had to place four pieces on the correct spaces on this chessboard, and that would make an LED display light up. So this is quite a common puzzle type that you see in escape room games and there's a couple of different ways you can go about approaching uh, designing it but essentially all of the technical solutions work in roughly the same way which is that you have some sort of sensor on the underneath of the board or a mass of wires in this case and a piece is detected on the front space of the board this is what the players see obviously and something gets detected by the sensor underneath um, and when all the sensors have been activated the puzzle is solved. So the choices are how do you operate that sensor and there's a couple of different options. So the first option is uh, this, this is a reed switch and a reed switch is a really really simple mechanical switch. It's got two metal plates inside it uh, that are very close together like that and when a magnet is placed near the reed switch the uh, attractive force on the metal plates causes the contacts to close that creates a circuit that means the current can flow and when so if you have a magnet in the bottom of all of your uh, chess pieces and a reed switch underneath the board when all of the circuits uh, when all of the contacts are closed the circuit flows and the puzzle is solved um, so this is a different type of sensor uh, this is called a hole sensor and like the reed switch it's activated by detecting a magnet um, but it's got a couple of important differences between the reed switch as well. So remember the reed switch just has two uh, simple connectors, an input and an output, and the presence of a magnet either makes the switch open or closed, so it's all or nothing. A hall sensor has three legs, and the way it works is that you apply a voltage between one of or one pair of the legs. It's normally between the middle leg, which is a ground, and a voltage in on one side um, and then depending on the amount of mag uh, magnetic field in which the sensor is placed a variable proportion of that voltage can then be detected on the other leg so it's a bit more complicated to understand than the reed switch but what it means is that you can actually get a variable response let's say you apply 5 volts um, which is the output of uh, an Arduino, conveniently enough. Um, so if you apply 5 volts between the ground and the voltage in on one side, at rest, so when there's no magnets around, the voltage detected on the other leg is normally around 2.5 volts. So it's about halfway of the input voltage. If you place a north uh, or one pole of a magnet in front of the sensor, the voltage will increase right the way up to um, the maximum so you can detect all five volts on the other leg. If you place the other pole of the magnet near the sensor it will decrease all the way down to no volts at all, no voltage coming through. So um, you can get this whole spectrum of responses whereas the read switch was, was on or off this gives you uh, effectively an analog reading all the way. And that means that you can adjust the sensitivity in your program uh, to make it more or less sensitive. Um, now, hall sensors come in lots of uh, different varieties. I'll show you the link to the exact hall sensor I'm using. This is uh, an SS49E. But I should just point out that the pins are sometimes different in a different order in different hall sensors. So you need to make sure you plug the pins in the right way around. Um, and they also come in, uh, in other varieties as well. So you can get something called a latching hall sensor. A latching hall sensor will turn on in the presence of uh, a magnet, but not immediately turn off again until it detects uh, an opposing um, polarity magnetic field. Um, you can get ones that have different sensitivities as well. And you can get ones that are either um, bipolar, which is what I just described, which is where the north and the south pole are a magnet, um, uh, alter the voltage in different directions. You can also get unipolar uh, hall sensors that are only affected by a certain polarity of a magnet. So they're a bit more complicated to understand uh, the read switches but they are a lot more flexible um, and you can you can use them in a, a wider variety of applications. 
Another solution you sometimes uh, see used is uh, one of these. This is a RFID sensor, um, so the sort of thing that you would normally see in a key fob to activate some kind of access lock. And this is not activated by uh, a magnet. Uh, this detects the presence of a little uh, RFID, uh, RFID tag, like that. So if that was placed on the bottom of the chess piece and the sensor was underneath, um, it could detect that the piece was placed on top. Now the big advantage that this has over the two uh, magnet methods is that um, these tags have a unique ID on them. So not only would the sensor be able to tell that a chess piece had been placed, but it would actually be able to tell the unique chess piece that had been placed. Um, so for any kind of uh, specific object recognition puzzle, um, these are really useful and I'll have another video where I do explain how I use these uh, in the future. But for this particular puzzle, for the chessboard, um, I decided to go with the, uh, the hall sensor. Um, so the first thing I did was um, start with my chess pieces. These are the chess pieces that fit nicely on this board. Uh, like that, you can see they, they came with the board. Again, I picked this up from a charity shop for three pounds. Highly recommend it as a source for all of your escape room supply needs. Um, and these pieces have a uh, felt um, bottom on them, um, which fortunately was fairly easy to uh, peel back. And underneath the felt, I simply um, drilled a hole just large enough to conceal one of these small neodymium uh, rare earth magnets. Uh, these are very, very strong magnets for their size, they're hugely strong, and they can easily uh, be detected by the hall sensor even going through um, the thickness of the chessboard. So that's ideal for my purposes. Uh, and then to install the sensor on the underside of the board, uh, you'll see this is my kind of, uh, this is my test piece, um, which is why it's in kind of such a scrappy state, but it was just as well really in the real thing. So um, I kind of chose which pieces, which uh, um, positions on the board uh, I wanted the player to have to paste pieces on to activate the puzzle. Um, and I did that by looking up a uh, particular well-known end game called the Saavedra position. And uh, I chose that. Remember, this is all part of a wider room escape game. And I've mentioned in the past, it's important to try to get your props to tie in both with your theme and your narrative if possible. So this tied in with the theme because the theme of this escape room was games. The solution was described in a uh, book of well-known chess studies um, and it described in the book uh, the positions that the pieces had to be placed in so that's what gave the player the information of what they needed to place well on this board. So the circuit for this puzzle is actually quite straightforward in terms of wiring. Um, but like I said, it can be easy to get muddled up with which leg of the hall sensor gets attached to which uh, input and things like that. So it's always a good idea to test your designs uh, on a breadboard before you actually install them into the prop itself. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you now. So I'm just going to try and demonstrate how this hall sensor works. So here it is. And you see it's a, a tiny little D shape. So I've got the narrower side away from me, the longer side towards me. I'm just going to plug it into this uh, breadboard here. Uh, I'll just get that in there. There we go. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got a, um, here's my multimeter. I've got a 5 volt supply coming in on the right hand leg, um, and then a ground in the middle. And then on the left hand side, I've just got this sensor, which is also reading across to ground. Now, you see, it's a 5 volt supply. It's coming in just over halfway at the moment, just over 2.5 volts is currently being detected. Um, so that's at rest with no magnet. If I take this magnet here and place it in front of the sensor, uh, you'll see the voltage between the sensor leg and the ground has gone right the way down now uh, to under a volt. If I take the magnet and spin it around, so I've got the other pole and place it in the same way, you'll see the voltage has gone all the way up this time, um, so closer to five uh, volts. I can place it on the other side of the sensor as well. Um, so hall sensors generally work a bit best in one direction or the other, but it does work in uh, either side of the sensor, as long as it's in front of the face. When I take the magnet away, it returns to the resting uh, position again of, of just over 2.5 volts. 
So once I'd made sure that I'd got the uh, wiring correct for each individual hall sensor, I could then get on to actually creating the entire circuit. So I had four different hall sensors, um, one underneath each of the squares of the board, and they were going to share a common ground and also a common 5 volt supply. So that was uh, two of the legs of each sensor. And then the, uh, the final leg of each sensor, I was going to wire to uh, individual pins on an Arduino board. Now, uh, these are brilliant. I love Arduinos. Um, this is the Uno, which is kind of the, um, the standard model, as it were. Um, they're very cheap, very flexible, and you can use them to control all sorts of um, electronic projects. Now, I suppose technically I didn't really need an Arduino for this particular puzzle. Um, all I was doing was measuring voltage and I could have just done that without the need for a processor. Um, but because I wanted to make it more flexible as to what happened when the sensors was all detected. So in this case I, I wanted to control an LED display but you could just as easily um, control a mag lock, uh, release a door or um, open a switch or light a light bulb or make a sound effect come out. Um, and these are just so easy to modify your circuit when in software and upload it to one of these. So um, here's the wiring diagram or simplified wiring diagram. Like I say, all of the, um, all of the sensors share a five volt supply and a common ground which goes to the Arduino and then I'm using the analog input pins for each of the sensors remember because what I'm going to get is a, a reading that's not just on or off I'm going to detect uh, a voltage that's come across that sensor pin and the advantage of me doing that is it means I can adjust the sensitivity. Remember that when I showed you on the multimeter just then that actually when there was no magnet present it wasn't reading exactly half of the input voltage it was actually reading slightly above that um, and as the magnet approaches the, um, the reading goes up or down. So what I wanted to do was to set a sensitivity in code that would mean that when a piece was placed above the correct square the sensor had um, changed voltage reading by a certain amount. But if it was placed on the square next to it, for example, I wasn't getting an erroneous reading above the sensor. So again, this is a, a good reason why I wanted to use uh, hall sensors rather than read switches, because I could tweak um, the code very easily by just trial and error to find out the value um, that would detect a correct placement right above but not if it was just in the vicinity. So having said that I'm using an Arduino, uh, I best now talk through the Arduino code. So um, this is the whole code for the, um, the puzzle. It's probably a little bit more complicated than it needs to be because um, it actually has um, all of the code, has about 260 lines in total. And that's because it's got quite a lot of comments on it, as you can see. And it also has all of the additional functionality uh, for controlling the LED display. Um, but just to focus on the components of this that describe how the hall sensor works. So notice that at the beginning um, I define um, four input pins. Those are my analog inputs that the sensors are going to be attached to. And I also have a, a base level for the sensitivity. That's the amount by which I'm going to see where the reading from that changes to say, yes, there's been a, a piece placed on top of this sensor. Um, so rather than just assume that the base level is going to be at half the voltage, as I showed you in the, um, the video on the multimeter earlier, actually it can vary a lot depending on the environment in which you're in. There's always sort of background levels of uh, magnetism around you, things like that. So what I actually do is I initialize an array of uh, base readings for each of the sensors and then I compare that to the current readings on each um, iteration through the main program loop. Um, so I've got some functions here, these are just to do with the uh, display. Um, so I've got a, this is my onSolve method, so when the puzzle is solved, um, this just writes some uh, values to an LED display that says correct. Um, it actually gave a uh, pin code out that was then uh, used for another puzzle, um, was what I used on the day itself. Um, 
but this is uh, so this is my uh, reset method though and this is what gets called both on the initial setup of the game and also every time the game is is reset for whatever reason as it's running so this is the uh, the main loop where I actually set the um, the readings through to the sensors so I loop through each of the sensors and then for each sensor I actually take 15 samples just to make sure that I didn't sort of get some dodgy values so I uh, read each sensor 15 times add up the total value um, and then divide that total to get uh, an average uh, of whatever that sensor is reading in the presence of no magnets remember so this is what I do at the initial setup and every time I reset the game as well and then just for debugging purposes I, I write that out to um, uh, the serial connection so if I've got a PC plugged in I can kind of say uh, this is what all the base sensors are reading um, and then uh, during the the main program loop itself um, again what I do is loop through all of the sensors um, take the current reading that I'm getting from that sensor and, and then in this line here what I do is I compare whatever the current reading from that sensor is to whatever that average base reading was I calculated during setup uh, if that is less than the sensitivity then I'm saying that not all the pieces are in the correct place yet so this is kind of a, a, a negative loop but this is kind of the most efficient way to set it up so what I want to do is to make sure that all of the sensors have deviated from their base reading by more than the sensitivity which means that if any of them have deviated by less than that then the puzzle hasn't been solved so it's kind of set up the opposite way around from maybe you think about it but um, that's what that means um, and then I sort of say so if the puzzle was running and all the pieces have been placed in the correct position then I call my onSolve method um, but if the puzzle had been solved and now one of the pieces has been moved so it's no longer in the correct position um, I call a different method called on unsolve so you don't really need that bit if you just want the puzzle to become latched and, and once it's been solved once um, to remain solved from then onwards you just need that bit um, but I added this bit in so that if the if the uh, chess pieces were moved after the puzzle had been completed I actually get uh, a different method there as well uh, so this is essentially the finished uh, item. Uh, we've got the chessboard here, which has got hall sensors placed underneath the correct position there, wired into an Arduino. Uh, we have, um, this was what the players found uh, in one of the books, which describes uh, the end game, the Savadra position, and the position of uh, four chess pieces. And they found these four chess pieces at the solution of another puzzle. So again, always tying back the themes of the escape room itself which was uh, books and games and they found these as a result of previous puzzles if they then take uh, the chess pieces which remember have had a magnet inserted into the base and place them on the board in the positions described uh, in the book then as we place the fourth piece we'll find uh, and this was actually a code in the game itself but that's just a, an LED light that was placed under the, uh, the pages of the image